good morning. Um, I'm Smriti and I've been working in this summer under the Corana program in the lab of Dr. Norman Drinkwater in Mekata Laboratory for Cancer Research. And uh, this is the project that I've been doing, which is the identification of the liver cancer susceptibility modifier in the chromosome 17 of the C57 brown mice. Okay, um, the basic question, uh, why work on liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma? It is the fifth most common neoplasm in the world, the third most common cause for cancer-related death, causing over 500,000 deaths per year. The incidence is two to five times higher in men than women. The reason for this has not been attributed very clearly, but it is attributed to hormonal environments and exposure to other risk factors. Uh, this just gives a geographical distribution of the liver cancer mortality rate in the world. You can see uh, clearly that the rate is very high in country in uh, continents like uh, Africa and also in Asia. And this graph also indicates clearly that in all regions, the uh, mortality rate in males is much higher than females. Uh, just to give a little background, um, my lab has been using mouse models to work in liver <coughs> cancer. The reason for this primarily is that in mice, the incidence in males is generally much higher than females, which is the same thing which we see in humans. But there is this specific strain of mice in which I'm working on, which is the brown mice, which is quite different in the fact that the females are almost as susceptible as the males. So this makes it an interesting model. And generally, the inbred mice strains differ dramatically in their susceptibility to liver cancer. So the brown mice, which I'm working on, is, is 550-fold more susceptible than most of the resistant strains, which would include the C57BL6J, which I would refer to as B6, and the C3H strain. Both these strains are resistant strains. <coughs> So, uh, I mean, just to give a small background, uh, previously linkage studies were done between the brown and the basic mice. And the, chrome, and the HCF1 locus, which is present on the chromosome 17, was identified as the predominant locus, mainly because it accounts for two-thirds of the susceptibility in the brown mice. And by further analyzing the recombinants that were obtained, the region of the locus was narrowed down to a 1.43 megabase region, which is this region, this is the region in which I'm working on. It spans from 34.05 megabases to 35.48. It's a 1.43 megabase region. It, uh, just to talk a little bit about the region, it contains 160 genes, and it partially overlaps with the major histocompatibility complex, and it is rich in immune response genes. So that makes it very interesting. Because inflammation is, uh, I mean, I mean, is attributed in liver cancer. So, and it also corresponds to the region on the human chromosome 6P, which is amplified in half of the liver cancer cases. <coughs> so that also makes it a very interesting re region to study. So the objective of my study here was to identify genes in the brown, uh, in, in the HCF1 minimal region, which are unique to brown. Like um, in this case, as you can see, the B6 and the C3H are uh, resistant strains, whereas the brown is a susceptible strain. So we are looking for genes that are unique from both C3H as well as B6, because we believe, I mean, that would be the reason for, that would be causing the susceptibility. <coughs> and uh, th this I propose to do by two methods, primarily by sequencing and SNP analysis, SNP being single nucleotide polymorphisms. And the second part of my project was based on differential expression analysis. So um, coming to the first part, the methodology that I followed was the basic sequencing protocol. I uh, ran PCRs and um, this we did by, uh, by designing overlapping primers for the genes present in that region. And the primers were designed using the B6 information, which uh, whose the B6 is a strain whose genome has been sequenced. So we use the B6 information to design overlapping primers of about 500 to 700 base pairs. For example, in this particular gene here, which is the LY6G6C, uh, this would be one set of primers, and this would be the second, and this would be the third. 
and uh, mainly we concentrated on sequencing the exons and the flanking regions around it. So um, this was one plot. This was this was a point where I had a lot of troubleshooting to do because many of the PCRs did not work due to a lot of reasons. And uh, for the reactions that worked, we went on to purify the PCR products, did the big dye sequencing PCR, and then analyzed for the presence of any SNPs. Uh, just to talk a little bit about the troubleshooting that I did. One of the things that I tried was the fail-safe buffers. The, there are 12 fail-safe buffers which have a varying concentration of magnesium chloride whose concentration varies between 3 to 7 millimolar in the buffers. And it also contains a PCR enhancer that has betaine. And this is supposed to reduce the non-specific binding of the primers. So we tried using the fail-safe buffers for the reactions where uh, normal buffers did not work. So uh, this was one case where I did get a few bands, like here you can see that this is the failsafe buffer A, B, C and D. Here the B and C have given distinct bands while the A and D did not. So another thing which I did was the gradient PCR which was varying the temperature, the annealing temperatures. So I varied the annealing temperatures from 50 to 61 degrees and performed the reactions. As you can see here at the lower temperatures of 50 to 54 degrees, you can see a very clear band, whereas the band becomes weaker as the temperature increases. So uh, these are the results that I got for the sequencing, um, sequencing part. So these were seven genes which have, which, have been com I mean, which have been completed at the end of the sequencing. And these are some of the many genes who, in which the major gaps have been filled. But still, small region of the exons have to be filled, so you can't say that it's entirely complete. So uh, this is just to show an analysis of one of the genes that have been completed. This is the LY6G5C. Uh, as you can see here, uh, these are the exon regions, these, are these darker red ones. And these are the regions which we have sequenced. And you can see that it's complete because all the exons and the flanking regions have been sequenced. Um, first thing what we did was we did a sequence alignment with the basic strain which is the resistance strain and uh, this is just showing one of the three contexts. So uh, like this when we aligned it we found that there were several SNPs. Like in this particular context we found that there were three SNPs, three changes. So when we analyzed all of the contexts we found that there were about 14 SNPs. Next we went on to see if, the, if these SNPs were all of them were critical to our uh, experiment which would be uh, because we were concentrating only on the exons and the regions surrounding it. So we looked whether these SNPs were in those regions and we found out that out of the 14 only 8 of them were in the exon and in the flanking regions. So for these 8 uh, SNPs we went on to confirm whether the quality of the sequencing which we had done was good. Like in this particular case, um, here the, um, I mean, this is the basics, this is the brown. So the G has been changed to C. And this is the corresponding peak for the sequencing. And as you can see, it is very clear. So uh, like um, when we did this, we found out that there was no problem with the sequencing. We went on to do this for all the eight. And the quality of all the eight, six, eight <coughs> points were good. And then we went on to compare it with another resistance strain, which is the C3H. The sequence data is available in the Sanger, Sanger database, so we used that and we found out. And in this case, uh, we found that the uh, change that had occurred in the brown had also occurred in the C3H. It was pretty consistent. So uh, the G which has changed to C, this change is also found in C3H. Uh, but C3H is a resistant strain, so this shows that this change is not what is causing the susceptibility. When we did similar analysis to the other SNPs present in this particular gene, we found that none of them were significant because we saw the same changes in the C3H. So as a result, we eliminated <coughs> this uh, LY6G5C gene as the, as the liver susceptibility modifier. So um, the future directions for this part of the project would be to sequence the remaining genes and then analyze the genes for the presence of any interesting SNPs. And, and uh, as a result of this, identify genes which have mutations unique to the brown strain. So uh, coming to the next part of my project, which was differential expression analysis, uh, just to talk about the methodology that was used. 
the liver cells from the mice were taken and the it was purified and the mRNA was prepared. It was reverse transcribed to give the cDNA and uh, from the cDNA uh, previous microarray studies had been done. So uh, from the microarray studies there were a few candidate genes that were identified. These candidate genes had been differentially ex I mean ha have been differentially expressed in the brown mice as against the B6 mice. So uh, my part of the experiment was to verify whether these candidate genes by using a quantitative real-time PCR. And, uh, and also another thing was there were a few genes which were not expressed in the microarray. So we wanted to verify whether uh, these, any of those genes would be a candidate gene. Uh, this was the result that was obtained as a result of microarray between the brown and the B6. So there were six genes that were identified as candidate genes as they were differentially expressed. One gene uh, which uh, here which I, I would just point out to is the C4A which has a three point which, which is expressed 3.2 fold higher in the brown as against the B6. I'm just pointing out this because I'll be talking about this in the next slide. So uh, this is a result of the quantitative PCR that we obtained. Out of the 14 genes and the uh, <coughs> along with three housekeeping genes that we tested, we found that five of these genes are differentially expressed in brown and C3H as relative to B6. So all these genes could be possible candidates, but one very interesting candidate was this one, which is the C4A transcript 6. As I had mentioned, the C4A is seen to be, uh, I mean, from the microarray we saw that it was 3.2 fold higher, I mean highly expressed in the brown as against the B6. So uh, in this case it, it was seen that it was the it was about 2.6 <coughs> fold higher. So that is pretty consistent and as you can see here the expression of C3H relative to B6 was it was down regulated. So this shows that in uh, the brown is different from the B6 the expression and the uh, as well as the C3H. So this makes it as an interesting candidate, so this probably could be a candidate gene that is causing the liver cancer susceptibility. So uh, future directions for this part would be to do the expression analysis for the other candidates and also do the quantitative PCR and analyze the genes that were not expressed in the microarray. As a result, we aim to identify few potential candidate genes and to them. <coughs> Uh, just to summarize my project, um, the aim of my project was to identify unique genes in the brown mice which are causing the susceptibility by using SNP and expression analysis. As a result of the sequencing analysis, seven genes were completed and several gaps were filled. Based on the analysis of the SNPs, the LY6G5C gene was eliminated. And as a result of the expression analysis using qPCR, we identified, five, we identified five differently expressed genes or transcripts, out of which one, which is the C4A, which <coughs> we believe could be a potential candidate. Acknowledgements, I would like to thank Dr. Norman Drinkwater for hosting me in the lab, and Dr. Andrea Bilger and Rebecca Boss for guiding me through the project. So, um, and I would also like to thank the Department of Biotechnology, Government of India, the IUSSTF, and UW Madison for providing the funding for the Corona program. And thank you. Would you like to take any questions? Um, have you looked at the nature of the SNPs themselves? I mean. Do some of them encode for just amino acid changes or um, stop or anything like that? Have you, have you done uh, that? No, actually we haven't had the chance to do that. Okay. The other thing is um, the C4 AT6, mm -hmm. was that in the 34 <coughs> um, megabase region? Yeah, it was. Okay, all those genes were? Yeah, the, we, te we tested the genes in that particular region. factors as in more of environmental factors such as exposure, I mean, could be aflatoxins, um, alcohol, and those kind of exposures. 